Pastor Richard Orrell here, Battlefield Assembly of God. So thankful for Helen Howarth Lummel, wrote a gorgeous little song. We, most of us just sing the chorus. If you know the chorus, why don't you sing along with me? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth Well, there's just a laundry list of things that are screaming for our attention these days, not the least of which is our own personal health with the COVID virus stalking the land and actually the whole globe. Uh, it's understandable for us to have concerns about our health and, and not just our own health, but the health of those we love and the elderly and uh, others that are at special risk, of, of course we would have deep and personal concerns about all of that. And of course, not just our health, but our wealth. It's uh, kind of difficult to uh, be very much at peace when you have no job and, and no income. We're very thankful for stimulus checks and those kinds of things. Uh, so appreciative of the help that has been given but uh, naturally, naturally, we would have concerns about both our health and our wealth. And then social needs. I, uh, I, I just have to voice my, my wonderings. How do you service relationships when you can't see each other? Oh, I know the phone and, and uh, oh my, there's just a bunch of things. Zoom and Skype and, and FaceTime and... Uh, th those are all appreciated and we are doing our best to take advantage of it. Frankly, I'm really blessed at the way the church at large has stepped up to do our best to minister to each other and also to others that maybe are, are outside the church. We hope that's going on. I believe it's going on. I see it going on. So our health, our wealth, our social needs and, and yeah, they are screaming at us. I mean, the, the media t takes great pains to see to it that we don't forget about any of this. But there is also a still small voice. I'm so glad that God's voice is, uh, is that way. It's characterized in Scripture as a still small voice and supersedes the thunderings of the earthquake and the storm and the breaking of rocks and all of those kinds of things because it comes to us at some kind of a, a personal level, the still small voice of God. I hope that we're listening to that still small voice of God and I believe what is saying to us, certainly is to me, maybe to you, is turn your eyes upon Jesus, like the words of that old chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Rather, it's, it's a, a, a volitional thing. You make a choice. I hear all those other voices. I'm concerned about those other things that, uh, that are my concern. And I bear some responsibilities for others. But I, I want to hear God saying to me, there is a higher uh, uh, target for your attention. And that target is the Lord Jesus Christ. Over in the book of Revelation chapter 1, there's a, a passage of scripture. I just feel called upon to read it. I, John, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and 
patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Simona, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet, and with a golden sash around his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and of hell. And those words came to the ears of his best friend. Yeah, in those days of the earthly ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, John was his closest and best friend, described as that disciple that Jesus loved and was never challenged that statement. What wonderful times they must have had as they talked about things and life in general and scripture and all of the stuff that became foundational for John. And now that same person, not a, not a different, not a success of Jesus, but Jesus, Jesus of Galilee, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus of Bethlehem. But now as he speaks, there's thunder and there's lightning and there's power in what he has to say. John turned to see the voice. What an odd turn of phrase. Not turn to locate the source of the voice, but to see the voice of what he saw put him on the ground. What he saw overwhelmed his senses. What he saw absolutely made him like a dead man even though it was his very best friend. I wonder in these days in which we live, with so many uncertainties, yes, and so many loud voices shrieking at us about how concerned we ought to be and how shook up we really should be. Wouldn't it be better to hear the still small voice of the Holy Spirit saying, listen up, because Jesus is still the Lord and he's coming soon. Look at him in his glory, look at him in his power, and realize that he has given you, Church of the Living God, he has given you the ability to rise above all these challenges and to blank out those shrieking voices of fear and doubt and unbelief and to listen to the one who says, I am the first and the last, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Put your trust in him. Hook your wagon to this star, sir. Attach your faith to this nature, this personality, Jesus of Nazareth. And I speak this confidence to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.